Hi again, welcome to my channel. Uh, thank you for taking the time to check me out. Today I want to do something quite interesting. Uh, uh, probably about a month ago now, um, I had an unboxing of this T53 Richard, uh, Keith Richard tribute model. Um, it's had time to settle. Um, the strings are stretched. Uh, I've been playing it quite a few uh, quite a few times to get used to it to try to bond with it um, and the more I play it um, the more I can appreciate its value and its tonal offerings it give me um, different sort of sounds it can give me different sort of feel um, I want to basically pit this against um, a, another acquisition I bought this wasn't from Toman, this was from eBay. It's, um, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's called the T62, but it's the double bounded one. It's got the double bounded on it. Ferrules at the back. Um, it's got a roasted maple neck. Um, vintage styles tuners. Um, it's very, excuse my funky, let me take this off funky strap my daughter bought me. Okay. This is a, a completely different beast to this. Um, number one, the first notable thing I've noticed about this, it's much lighter than this. This is a much heavier guitar. Um, but having said that, they feel and sound completely different. Now, like I said before, this is, I bought this before I bought that from actually directly from Tongman in Germany. This I bought on eBay. Um, it was a raw, light, percussive sounded instrument. I liked the sound of it very much. But certain things bugged me about this guitar was the components. Now, I've heard a lot of people say that Harley Benton is very, very good um, to be used as a modding platform. Um, one of the things I, I kind of try to, to do, if I don't sort of bond with a guitar, I just get rid of it. But a couple of things which, which I knew I could improve um, I didn't want to take. I didn't want to change the pickups because I wanted to basically explore a couple of avenues first of all before I went down that route. So the first thing I did first, I, when I first got it, I noticed the actual selector switch was very flimsy, moving about. I saw this this um, what do you call it? it? It was a. I'm really sorry, but I, I didn't. I, I can't remember if I got it from Amazon or eBay. It was a complete switch uh, switch gear for tele uh, T type type guitars, and to my amazement, it was it came preloaded with CTS pots and switches. <laughs> That's right, uh, for twenty five pounds, if my memory uh, if I was correct on that. It's, about, it's no more than it's no more than twenty seven pounds. I think I've got I think I paid twenty five pounds for it. So I ordered it and I couldn't believe it. Now it had, you can change different sort of tones on it because it had a push pull pot on it. Now I had an idea in my head and I'm no electronics expert. I wanted to create an Esquire type guitar. So I wanted something with a pure tele tone, very bright and percussive, which can cut through the mix. So I've got something tight, quietly unique. I messed about with the wiring. Um, so I just wanted the bridge pickup, to be honest, yeah? So I messed about with the pickups, um, the, the actual wiring, just by trial and error. And I got just the bridge, the bridge and the neck pickup to work. And that's what I wanted. But because this preloaded switch gear came with CTS pots, that is correct. Um, yes, it did. Um, totally changed the tone of the guitar and also got Wilkinson's 
intonated brass saddle bridge. If you can see that. That's the preloaded switch gear I came preloaded uh, with CTS pots. Um, I was kind of surprised and it kind of it made the guitar come alive really. It's one of these guitars because it's so light and very percussive sounding. I was going to give an example if I can get a, a collection. Now, I'll play this simply unplugged. Now, let's compare that with the T53 Keith Richard tribute model. I'll just give you another kind of glance to show you just to remind you what it looks like in the flesh. Very beautiful guitar. I was a bit kind of disappointed with the colour, but it's grown on me. It's actually, it is actually by butterscotch. If you look at a butterscotch, this is actually representative of that colour. So it is correct. The added appointment, which is the six saddles, bridge, individual saddles on it. Um, they made it in gold. It just enhanced um, the actual appearance with the butterscotch which I think is a good idea and it's basically fitted with um, Keith Richard um, type it's a tribute it's not a uh, it's a tribute model um, so it's not a signature model it's a tribute model um, I believe that um, someone told me in the comments that it was called Macabre whatever um, this is fitted with Tesla Opus 1 pickups lovely pickups really are okay just show you for example compare it to the t62 vintage series in terms of percussive mix unplugged To my ears, this sounds much more richer, much more percussive and louder than that. And that really has a bearing on the tone. And as I said before, um, this is not a standard. Um, I've, I've changed it with a preloaded Telecaster um, switch gear with CTS pots, um, push pull, but I wired it to try to create my own version of an Esquire minus the sort of bass thing. I just wanted the bridge initially but somehow wide up so it works on the the neck and the bridge. That's it. That's what I wanted. Because of the switch gear it, it enhanced the tonal qualities of the pickups. Um, obviously with the brass saddles I'm sure that adds to it. I'm no expert. It's just my what I picked up on it. Now I want to compare the two together. I want to compare and see which sounds and I'm going to play, play it through my trusted, I'm not going to play it through the um, the Roland Cube which I basically demonstrated it both with. I'm going to play it through a PV Classic valve uh, amplifier and the speakers I'll just double check. Yeah. It's fitted with G12 vintage speakers with, with that, okay? And if you can see my, uh, this is my pedal board, which I'll be using. Um, it's got a, a century delay, a a graphic equaliser, a 
the Digitech Smoking Blues pedal, uh, the actual chromatic Behringer tuner, Behringer Ultra Tremolo, and that's it. What I'll do, I'll probably use, um, I'll basically use it on the clean channel, just on that, so you can get an idea of the tones I get. I'm going to literally compare them side by side with the various pickup selections to see what comes out. And at the end of the day, I'm going to, I'm going to hope to demonstrate um, how the T53 Keith Richard model with the um, Tesla Opus One pickup makes a massive difference. You guys out there who loves um, Gibson Les Paul single cut, that humbucking sort of tone, that will produce it in, in spades. And added to that, you've got the Telecaster bridge pickup for your country, um, whatever, um, your twang as well, okay? So, I'll start off with TE62 on the clean channel. Now this is with the This is, I'm going to start on the, the way I wired it up. <laughs> I don't know, I said I'm no electronics genius. I might get somebody to kind of wire it up um, exactly as it's supposed to be with the push-pull part act activated because I think you can get a Peter Green tone out of it when I first wired it up. Quite interesting tones you get. But I just specifically wanted a, a pure telly twang sound from this nothing else okay so I've wired it up and somehow I don't know what I did but when it's actually on this position which is supposed to be the neck it's actually the bridge the middle is exactly um, the neck sorry the first position is the bridge the second position is still the bridge and the third position is the uh, neck Okay, so I'll start with the um, the neck pickup. start with the um, sorry that was the actual neck pickup I'll start with the actual bridge <laughs> actual tone so you can see um, how how effective the potentiometer is is to, to get just to kind of get rid of the high thrilly sound and tone it down a bit <laughs> Thank you. 
So you can see it's, it, it's pure telly in terms of the bridge. I've raised the bridge um, as high as possible. Um, I saw a video once, I think it's, um, what's his name? Um, his name kind of, uh, something Smith. He's a telly player, um, wears a ponytail, probably, probably know his name. His name forgets, um, I can't remember his name, but he said that um, the actual telecaster was inspired by the offender, I don't know if it's true, with the lap steel. And the lap steel's uh, it's just got like a bridge type pickup on it, and it's very, very close to the, to the actual strings. Okay, so I tried to replicate that, and that really gave it that kind of power, yeah? <laughs> basically swap over to the T53 okay okay so that was completely no effects it was the amp it wasn't on boost or anything like that. It was the pure, um, uh, clean channel on the PV Classic 30. Okay, right. I'm going to start with the the bridge. Okay, totally as you can see, a totally different sound straight away. roll back the actual tone okay thing I noticed when I've changed over from um, the T62 to this to the T53 the feel of the neck is slightly um, it's like a 50s but not as fat but it, it sound it feels because obviously the first thing you when you pick up a guitar the neck is everything okay that's a brilliant neck don't get me wrong but this has got like a fluidity to it. It's got a nice reassuring, effortless feel to the neck. It feels glorious, if that kind of makes sense. You know, it's all subjective, because everyone will basically interpret, it. it'll pick up something, I don't like this, it's probably like a V or a, a U or a D. But to me, personally, this neck makes this guitar. One of the, the most important factors of, is the actual neck of it, the feel of it. It's awesome. <laughs> that was the bridge pickup with the actual bit of tone rolled off turn it up again so you can hear the different <laughs> okay 
gonna say the middle, the bridge and the middle uh, and the neck together, okay? <laughs> Okay, now on the actual neck pickup, that's the humbucker, okay? First of all, we hear the beautiful. Turn down the tone a bit more. Okay. To give you sort of a like more of a jazzy type uh, influence. kind of as you can see it's beautiful mellow jazzy tones you know blues as well as you can see um, now let's basically swap back over to the T62 and let's do some kind of um, noodling as I like to call it to explore some of the sounds okay now what I'll be using I'll be putting on the the graphics I wanted to dial in a, a kind of tone which I like which as much brings out the um, the richness of a guitar okay okay this that sounds normally on the clean Basically, just um, putting on the graphic equalizer. Hear the difference. Let's see if I've put some lights on. I don't know if the. What the oh. Okay. Okay. is with the um, the neck pickup so you can say it even sounds so rich this is obviously um, Roswell pickups and those are Tesla's okay totally different pickups but before so I showed you just by putting well I just changed the actual switch gear with CTS uh, it's got preloaded with CTS pots and the switches and the Wilkinson's brass intonated bridge made a vast it, it brought out something from the Roswells which I didn't know existed it made it much more rich gave it more much more clarity okay so that's a, probably a little tip you might want to try 
or if you've tried it, let me know in the comments. So this is on the neck pickup, okay, just with the, the graphic equalizer. This for example, I'm gonna sort of kind of kind of to discover what I can get out of this. the actual bridge. try a bit of um, uh, the screaming blues to give it a sort of bit of a bit of a boost to see what it sounds like I'll have to turn down the actual volume because I've got neighbors okay tone a little bit just to sort of show you how dynamic the guitar really is I think um, that um, will give you a kind of idea. Um, you don't really just spend a lot of money. Um, what, what are these new? About 130 odd quid? I don't know. Probably cheap. You know, I've got, I've got this for 113 on eBay. 
but even you've got it directly from Tungman, um, you can set it up the way you want it. I'll definitely recommend changing the, rear, the, the saddles, the brass saddle for the Wilkerton, compensating to get the intonation spot on. Um, look on, on eBay or Amazon, I'm not quite sure, please accept my apologies, I can't remember where I got it from, but I think I got it from possibly eBay. It's preloaded um, T-style switch gear or T-style guitars, and it comes with, I correctly, I kid you not, with CTS pots and switch gear. And the quality is absolutely superb. Um, it literally enhances the pickups. I've noticed this on this guitar. Um, let's basically do the same with that um, T53. See what it's like with the boost. This is the neck pickup without no boost, it's just on the clean channel, no effects whatsoever. Probably a slight delay on the actual, um, on the amp, that's it. Neck, middle. graphic equalizer and the same on the bridge pickup again basically try it with the, um, the screaming blues pedal same with the neck
Now, two different types of guitars with two different types of tones and possibilities. Um, I wouldn't say one's better than the other. In terms of feel, which one feels better to me in its playability is definitely this one. Because of the neck, the fluidity, the frets, the fret ends are so fantastic. Um, I've got nines on this. I normally play with tens, but the nines gives it extra ability to bend the strings. It doesn't choke out anything like that. This has tens on it. This is much more, you have to dig in with this. It's, it's very kind of in your face. Um, it, 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 it's kind of um, raw, yeah? Very percussive. It gives that stinging telecast the tones you get from it, okay? Um, it, it's something I could, I can happily go to a studio or gig or have fun at home with, you know? Um, it, basically, I can play these two for hours on end, okay? Um, I hope this, um, thank you for taking the time uh, to spend with me um, reviewing these guitars. Um, what I would like to do, my next video, um, is toss up between uh, a tale of two guitars. <laughs> That's an interesting story. Um, the SC552 I ordered. Um, but that's another story. I, I won't leave you suspense. I'll do a video on that. Um, it, it's, I'll, I'll give you a little hint. Um, I ended up with two. Because one came back from the factory damaged. Um, but it's a twist to that story. Um, the outcome was, was, well, I'll tell you about it and obviously I'll, I will basically, I've got both guitars here uh, to show you. Um, that is another video in itself. Or I could do, I've got two little gems because um, um, I'm, I'm, I'm always on the look for affordable guitars, guitars which can bond with, which will literally give you a lot of bangs for your bucks. Um, you know, people haven't got 30,000 or, or 8,000 or 10,000 pounds to spend on, say, a PRS or Gibson. Well, I've got two alternatives which will give them a run for their money in terms of build quality, sound and everything else. Um, and some, okay. Um, that is another guitar, uh, another video I'd like to do. So please sub subscribe if you haven't. Um, and make any comments you'd like. Um, I've had some fantastic comments on the unboxing and obviously the review of this and I've got some information which I didn't know about, um, I, you know, about what this is, guitar was inspired by, Keith Richards, what it was called, the story behind it. Wealth of information that people out there knows about, knows their, their stuff. Um, I know it's got a lot of videos regarding these two guitars, but they, I'm telling you, these represent extremely excellent value for money okay thank you for watching once again see you soon